In today's video, we continue our London update series. This time, we are just around the corner from Davidoff of London at the beginning of German Street, just outside the Piccadilly Arcade, visiting one of Britain's most prestigious and well-known shoemakers, Edward Green. Uh, let's go inside and visit with Anthony Bunn, their sales manager, and hear how Edward Green has been getting along during these times. Uh, Anthony, so great to see you. Yeah, hi, hi Kirby, great to, great to hear from you. Hope all is well. Uh, how has Edward Green been getting along uh, during what has undoubtedly been very difficult and, uh, to be quite honest, unprecedented times? Um, yeah, it's definitely been a you know a strange time I think for everyone at the moment, especially you know within footwear. It, you know, it's really given us the opportunity to kind of step back and have a have a real think about the, the direction of gentlemen's footwear and and luxury goods in in general. You know, we're quite fortunate. We have a a, a fairly personal relationship with a lot of our clients. And that's enabled us to talk to them, you know, in slightly more depth and get a real understanding of their personal situation, uh, you know, what's going to happen in the future work-wise, uh, and also the kind of their basic needs requirements from a, from a company company like ours. So, I mean, Edward Green, of course, is a global brand. I mean, sold all over the world. Uh, but the flagship store, uh, really the anchor of the brand, is located right there on German Street. So how has Edward Green been impacted with foreign travel being restricted and really so many, uh, even Londoners, are being kept at home? Yeah, I mean, in terms of sales, a large portion of our business is actually made up between kind of Asia, you know, Japan, um, Hong Kong, and then also America. And uh, of course, with people not being able to fly, um, not those regular business trips that we're so used to, we've definitely experienced a bit of footfall through our German Street store, you know, no doubt. Uh, fortunately, we do have a, um, you know, really nicely laid out website, which display, displays a lot of, our, lot of our products, new collection. Um, it also explains our made to order service. Um, and I think our customers have, you know, have really utilized that and they can get in touch with us by email, telephone, you know, any, any time and we're always happy to help. So where they haven't been able to make it in the store, I think, you know, we're fortunate enough to kind of direct them to the website and, and deal with them, you know, over, over the web and, and email. I mean, I think this day and age, of course, uh, having a website has really been uh, such a virtue for so many brands. I mean, think about it, you know, 30 years ago, if we were in the same circumstances without a website, uh, you know, really both of our businesses for uh, all intents and purposes would be completely shut down. Uh, so it really is exceptional. And I think Edward Green uh, it was really one of the first shoemakers to, to develop a, um, a web presence, uh, not just in the UK, but was one of the first that really developed a US a specific website uh, to allow the US clientele uh, to purchase uh, from the UK stock, but in a seamless way where they could purchase um, you know, in US dollars with duties prepaid, with free returns. And so I imagine that's been uh, really a life uh, saver uh, during uh, COVID. Uh, how else has Edward Green uh, adapted during these periods? Because it's just been fascinating to me as we've checked in with our friends in London uh, to learn just how everyone has really adapted in pretty unprecedented ways. Yeah, I mean, you've, <laughs> it's, it's quite a strange setup, but we tend to do a lot more kind of visual um, remote presentations. So for example, a lot of our, you know, a lot of our business is wholesale. Uh, us as a company, you know, myself, uh, Hillary, uh, my colleagues, we traveled all over the world to do trunk shows and, and meet wholesale clients, um, and, you know, and get to know their retail clients as well and educate them a little bit more about the shoes. And of course, not being able to do that has uh, kind of put a real strain. Um, however, we have used, you know, various different remote tools, you know, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, what have you, to actually display our, our, our new collections, you know, various different samples. Uh, via you know webcam, um, although it's not quite as as nice as you know going over to Japan and, and being able to fit someone in person, you know we we have been lucky enough that we we can kind of share what's up and coming, you know what we have planned, um, and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it's it's really fascinating to me uh, how many of the British kind of heritage brands that have really built their businesses on. Um, you know, doing things the old-fashioned way, uh, have found themselves really utilizing uh, Zoom and FaceTime to do video uh, conferences, not just with wholesale clients, but customers. Uh, I've even spoken with several uh, Savile Row bespoke tailors that have been using Zoom for bespoke fittings, which is uh, unfathomable just a few years ago. So Edward Green, I mean, whenever I think of Edward Green, I think of a really kind of the classic quintessential uh, English dress shoe. I think of a black cap to Oxford. I think of a beautiful um, 
you know, Adelaide, uh, I mean, you know, so many of the formal shoes that I, I associate with Edward Green, of course, are the ones uh, that I see people wearing in and around London. Uh, but with the stay at home uh, kind of orders and the lockdowns, uh, have you seen a shift in the type of shoes uh, people are purchasing? You know, maybe they're giving uh, more of a look at Edward Green's casual styles? Yeah, uh, excellent question. You know, um, as you can probably imagine, there's not so much demand for kind of black formal cap toe Oxfords at the, at the moment, you know. Uh, especially one like ours, you know, our staple piece, uh, the Chelsea with the Swan's Neck Stitch. Um, you know, we still we still have strong sales on them, there's still demand for it, but with, with people not going into the office, not going into the city, um, they just simply don't have the need for it. So really what we, we've done, and this goes back to my point of being able to talk to the, the customers on a more personal level, you know, we've really noticed demand for kind of like a house, a house slipper, either in a uh, soft kid suede or even a, uh, a velvet. I have an example just here. This is our Royal Albert, one of our most popular slippers, which we actually make in three different velvet colors. We do it in a olive, uh, a navy, and also a very rich burgundy that is quite traditional. You can see here that they have a slightly slimmer leather sole. So we use a slightly different construction to our regular Goodyear welted shoes. This is actually a cemented sole. So it's very thin, it's very lightweight, and it's very comfortable. Inside, you will see they're fully lined. You still have your Ticket, ticket number there as well. Uh, so this kind of thing, you know, really easy, really competitive price point as well for, for, uh, for some customers. Um, really good all rounder. People have actually started wearing them, you know, out in the evening on the hotter, hotter days, you know, maybe not the velvet, <laughs> but uh, definitely these kind of variations that we see in a, a really elegant suede there. This is, a, this is a particularly nice one. This is a black kid suede. And again, you'll see that thin, uh, thin leather sole with the cemented sole construction there, just round the edge. Yeah, it's amazing. So, you know, carrying on that kind of theme, we also do some travel slippers. Now, although none of us have really had the opportunity to travel this year, these also are, are quite nice for wearing, you know, throughout the day on the, on the war, in the warmer weather, um, out for dinner, particularly nice in a baby calf black suede there. We can see that was actually new to our uh, spring summer 20 collection. I'll just pop that pop that one down here. We have two different models here again both with the cemented sole and the baby calf suede uppers. Here we can see one without the tassels which we call the polpero. Uh, this one's in a nice sand baby calf suede so you know really really versatile earthy tone there. Really nice and elegant to wear. And then again another spring summer 20 introduction was this number. This is uh, very, very similar, but with the tassels and a slightly different apron stitch. This is an army green baby calf suede. Now this has proven to be really, really popular, this color. You know, modern day trends, everyone's swaying towards khakis, browns, beige, creams, even whites. Um, and this pairs really well with that. You know, this is a hugely popular option. Uh, reason we call it a travel slipper, probably wondering is that you can simply you know, flat pack them, they don't require shoe trees. You know, you can kind of be really aggressive and flex them in your suitcase. And then when you arrive at your destination, you can simply just pop them out like that. Unfortunately, I didn't take a pair to Venice, but I did take a pair to Cambridge last week. <laughs> Uh, wow, those unlined slippers look uh, just absolutely comfortable. I've got uh, one or two pairs myself, and I think you really uh, hit that nail on the head and made a great point that, you know, so often they're referred to as travel slippers, but really more than anything else, they're just exceptionally comfortable, um, you know, uh, house shoes or just casual shoes to wear kind of in and around the house and in and around town. Uh, and especially the unlined versions, I mean, you can throw them on so comfortably without a pair of socks and head to the grocery store. I actually find myself wearing uh, more pairs of uh, really soft, constructed, either cemented uh, or Blake stitched unlined slippers uh, kind of on the weekends and I find myself even wearing tennis shoes. So, I mean, it's, it's great to see that Edward Green, of course, you know, drawing on its rich history has been able to develop, you know, these new, um, you know, new collections of kind of more casual uh, unlined shoes. Uh, but that's really, um, you know, it's really not what people think of whenever they think of a classic British shoe. Uh, so what are kind of the more timeless examples uh, that uh, Edward Green, of course, is so well known for that really build that foundation of someone's wardrobe? Yeah, I think that's a, you know, that's a really good point there. Um, you know, with Edward Green, we don't really tend to follow trends and, and fashion so much if you would. We like to make models that are timeless, 
and then remain quite classic and iconic to our collection. Uh, one of the main ones is, is just to my right hand side here, which I'm sure a lot of, um, I know you are and a lot of your viewers will be uh, familiar with. It's called the, the Dover. Um, I'll just pull out an example for you here. You know, this is a massively, massively iconic style for us. Uh, here you can see that really defined, precise um, apron stitch, got the split toe there, completely done by hand in our factory in Northampton. Uh, this particular one is probably our, our, our most classic option. It's in our really, really signature dark oak antique with a very subtle burnishing towards the toe and the back of the heels there. You know, this particular shoe, there's so many man hours, so much handwork involved that I think a lot of our customers really appreciate that. You know, it's, it's not like a fashion item. It's something that you can have in your wardrobe from the age of 18, uh, you know, right the way up to your 50s. You know, it's, it's a really, really nice timeless piece. Um, hopefully they last longer than that. You know, we've seen come back for repair, which is a, a service that we also offer. You know, resole, refurbishment of the uppers, redo the linings and so on. And uh, yeah, they do come back after 30, you know, 30 years, 35 years. Um, still looking better than some of the shoes I wear now, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it, it really is a testament to why one would invest in a pair of shoes uh, from Edward Green, uh, you know, being, you know, Goodyear welted uh, and really so well made is that they can stand the test of time and be resold. I mean, so many shoes uh, that are sold on the market today probably, uh, you know, never see shoe polish, much less, uh, you know, the, uh, the hands of a craftsperson that's going to resold them. You know, but a pair of Edward Green shoes uh, really are made to be resold so that they can last, you know, decades, if not uh, even a generation. You know, it's a combination of all different factors. Um, we spend a huge amount of time, you know, a lot of resources ensuring that our quality of leather, our quality of materials, um, you know, is the highest m money can get, really. You know, we, we seriously search far, long, hard to find this quality of leather and it pays dividends long term. You know, the longevity of an evergreen shoe is really the selling point. You know, it, what I say to my customers, it, it's not about looking at the shoe on the day. You know, when you pick it up, you go in, you try it on, you purchase it. Yes, it will feel great. You'll have amazing arch support. It's really when you come back to me in, you know, 30 years time and say, hey, look, Anthony, you sold me this Dover. Um, I want it resold for the fourth, fifth time now on a rubber sole. Um, I'd like you to just hand polish the leather darker. And, and, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it, send it back to the factory, you know, four or five weeks later. It will come back looking as close to new as, as possible. You know, might not even recognize the shoe. Um, and, and yeah, it all boils down to the materials, you know, the kind of construction that we use. People really know an evergreen shoe by looking at the welting. You know, we have kind of really close stitching around the toe cap there, especially as you get towards the arch and around the hill. You know, it really defines the shoe and it's, it's all justified uh, long, long term, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, even someone like myself that's pretty familiar uh, with Edward Green shoes, I still find myself in awe of just seeing uh, these models in person, how beautiful they are. Uh, what are some other kind of favorite iconic models that you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, putting kind of black Oxfords aside for the moment, um, for obvious reasons, um, we've found in the last few years that boots have, you know, really, really come into play in our collection. And now they play such an important part of our autumn winter season. There's one boot in particular, which I'm sure a lot of, a lot of your guys will be familiar with. It's called the Galway. Um, it comes on various different lasts, very different sole types, so many different leathers. I think it's a, a, about 15 to 16 different variations that we currently offer in the German Street store now. Um, you know, it really is what people would say the perfect all round boot. You can, you can dress it up slightly for more formal wear, you know, flannels, blazer. Or you can dress it down on the weekend with some cords or denim, you know, jeans, that kind of thing. Um, I'll show you just a couple of examples that we have on display here now. The really kind of hard and fast, weekend, rugged, traditional boot, which is actually based on um, the original military design, is um, this, this particular Galway. This Galway consists of an oil-based leather, which we call country calf. This particular one is a rosewood country calf. It also has a Veltschen construction, which you will be able to see if, uh, if we close up just on the top there. And then if we were to flip the boot over, you'll see that it has our, our heaviest, uh, most robust Ridgeway sole. So this would be your real kind of casual um, walking, shooting, rambling boot, which we would, we would recommend. Um, we like to call it kind of like the indestructible 
boot, we, we give you a challenge of trying to you know, wear it out, it just doesn't happen. Um, but then you can go from this extreme to, to really the other, um, which I'll show you, show you just now. For example, here. This particular Galway looks completely different. This one is made from a base of cordovan. It's a, our cognac cordovan. And then we have the shaft here for flexibility um, in a snuff suede, which is a really nice tan, you know, autumnal kind of suede. Um, if we just flip the shoe over here, you'll see that it has one of our more almond toe shaped lasts. You can see it's a little bit more modern, um, a little bit narrow, which would definitely be more appropriate if you, if you wanted to dress it up a little bit. You know, you wouldn't really want to dress this down too much. You could on the weekend, it still looks good with denim, but it looks really, really smart of a nice pair of chinos or flannels. Um, going back to the sole, if I just flip this over, you can see this has a leather sole, not always what you would kind of associate with a, with a Galway or a boot. Um, but you can really see how elegant this is if I just tip it on its side here. You have this double leather towards the front, so it still has that kind of rigidity, very robust. But as we get to the arch area here, you can see it kind of tapers into a single leather sole, just giving it that something a little bit different, a little bit of edge, a little bit of support. And, and so you can still kind of wear it, wear it out, wear it out quite hard, yeah. Yeah, the absolutely beautiful kind of dress boot. Uh, and oftentimes, I mean, especially in cold climates, uh, like in New York or uh, even England, where it is really exceptionally cold during the winter time, having that extra coverage uh, of a boot uh, really does uh, help keep one's ankles uh, warm uh, in gusty conditions. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful shoe. Uh, I especially love the invisible channel stitching. It's one of my favorite details of just that beautifully finished, smooth outsole with really no signs of the channel stitching that is used to stitch the outsole to the welt. Yeah, so you can see all of our, all of our leather soled shoes will come with a closed channel. Yeah, yeah. The only ones that don't are the rubber. <laughs> well, Anthony, hey, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to speak with us. Uh, of course, myself, just like so many other people, uh, very keen to hear how everyone is doing in London. I mean, I myself, you know, normally am in London, you know, a few times a year. Uh, and so 2020 has been uh, unprecedented in the fact that uh, I haven't been able to travel outside Dallas at all. Uh, so, of course, I've missed seeing uh, all my good friends and, uh, you know, kind of walking down German Street, you know, having a cigar at Davidoff of London, going through the Piccadilly Arcade, visiting Savile Row. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we'd be happy to welcome you into any of our, any of our branches, you know, London, Paris or Tokyo, if you get that far. Uh, yeah, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to fit you accordingly. And, and it'd be great to catch up after so long. Uh, and so really it's just great to kind of hear that everyone's hanging in there uh, and you know really kind of pushing through all this so you know as the British like to say you know keep calm and carry on um, and I think that's kind of how everyone is uh, really approaching this. Now for those of, uh, of us that maybe aren't able to um, you know actually visit the uh, Edward Green flagship there on German Street uh, in London I suppose that edwardgreen.com is our next uh, best option and through the website you have full access to Edward Green's entire collection uh, but the beauty of a really fine pair of shoes is once you know Know your UK size. Uh, after that point, you know, the world is yours. You can order uh, ad infinitum. So great update uh, from Edward Green. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Of course, if this is your first time on the channel, uh, make sure you hit that red subscribe button in the lower right hand corner so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. Of course, this is just one of uh, several installments in our London update series. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can learn whenever we release new videos as a part of this series. Uh, if you are on Instagram, uh, I invite you to follow me at Kirby Allison. It's really the best way to stay up to date about what's going on kind of in this world. And if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, I invite you to do so. Of course, it's how we support this YouTube channel. And there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories like this beautiful dark navy ancient matter tie that I'm wearing today. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for tuning in today.